Don in London, hello. It's uh, May 25th, 2009, a bit late in the day for my daily video, all about recovery from addiction to substance or behaviour. Been an interesting day and a half or two, and it's half past nine in the evening. I've just come back from an irregular visit to a newcomers meeting. In the UK, it's Bank Holiday Monday, and so some of the meetings close to me are not running they're shut down and uh, I was going to the Boltons tonight where it's a, a step meeting uh, not running because we hadn't got the right key to the door so I ended up going to the Servite Church Kindergarten Church Hall whatever it is uh, where a lot of newcomers to the Fellowship of AA turn up and it was a remarkable meeting if you can imagine two or three meetings missing uh, this particular meeting was quite full tonight noise is off somebody with their Ferrari there. So my video is all about recovery from substance addiction or behavioural addiction. My substance was alcohol, hence going to an AA fellowship and any behaviour you could possibly imagine. If I couldn't drink I'd find something else to do addictively or compulsively and crave some way of sorting out what, what that gap was inside me, what was causing the fear, what made me feel low, full of ego, putting on a brave face and not myself because I never knew who I was. So gently over the last few years I've been going to AA, it helps me on a daily basis. And at the beginning of every meeting that there is here in London, of which there are usually between six and seven hundred, I have no how many I have no idea how many there were today. But uh, I think one or two might have been well well attended. So people make the effort because it's worth it. It's worth making sure that we keep in touch with how to keep sober one day at a time. So when I go to meetings I hear this preamble shared at the beginning of each meeting and it settles me down into being part of something rather than on the outside and isolated. So the AA preamble goes like this. And by the way, I do not speak for AA. Anybody who goes to AA is a unique authentic human being and I cannot speak on their behalf and I certainly cannot speak on behalf of a fellowship which holds sacrosanct, the identity of people. They are, they are anonymous and they are unique authentic people. They don't need anybody speaking for them, so I can only speak for me here. So the preamble goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve, the, achieve sobriety. So why do I go to meetings? It's that final bit there. Our primary purpose is to stay sober, looking after my own sobriety, with help, and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So the key is inclusion and being a part of and having choices back in our lives. And the gift for me, going to a different meeting where there were newcomers, it was a, an interesting setup where there are two people who speak first, two chairs, and then people share back from the, the floor, if you like, or from the, the people who are there. So it's very interactive. And uh, one person was just over a year sober who shared first, and the other person was 16 years. And you know what? The message was as strong from both about what the fellowship does. It gives us back our choices on a daily basis. And the horror of being stuck in an addiction to a substance like alcohol or drugs is an abomination. And part of what happened yesterday was remarkable. I uh, went on the London Eye where I was able to take photos from great heights and see London in a different way. But I think the thing which made me tremble inside and be absolutely saddened was uh, meeting somebody who was selling a big issue which is a, a magazine that homeless people sell and helps them have some money to get by and this person only had one left and I suspect he may have bought it from another big issue person and was just trying to get some cash and you know where do we get to if we have no help no friends no support I've been where this person is, but this particular person, a uh, crack cocaine addict, heroin addict, and he had um, suffered MRSA, um, MRSA, which is a, a flesh-eating illness or infection, 
and the poor man he had uh, sores down to the bones and you know he couldn't see getting to hospital as a priority and uh, I was with a friend of mine and we tried to help by suggesting you know where to go how to go there and he knew all of those things but he, thought, he felt he might go in a day or two and you know, you know why? because he's been turned away so many times and not treated, treated for what is ailing him and that's addiction it's a horrible horrible disease and people when you're in it or well, anybody who knows they're in it knows just how awful it is we cannot stop doing something which is killing us and when you see somebody in such a, such a state and uh, the police won't help the hospitals don't know what to do I know my local hospital Chelsea and Westminster would do their best but uh, you've got to get the person there somehow and if they're reluctant and won't go under their own steam you cannot force them so you know the reminders of what life happened, where where life can take us. I went on the streets, and you know I survived just about. But this poor guy, if he makes it for a few days, I'd be very surprised. You know it's sad, and uh, life is full of this. It's it's like we have a invited to see something spectacular, and at the same time we're brought to earth and understand just how sacred life is and how easily we give it up when we're in addiction because we are ill and it took me a long time to understand that, that I was ill with something which would not let me alone it was compulsion, a craving which was beyond my power to stop and the only way I found to do it was to found other, find other people who said yes admit you're powerless and stick with some people who've got some good ideas and some good, good notions about the choices you can make unique authentic choices to be a unique authentic human being so whilst we've all got one similarity when we go to AA, we all stay as unique, authentic individuals on our journey. So it was, it's been a, a really good lesson for me. Two good meetings, and you know, seeing five people go up and get their, their one-month chip, you know, one month into the program, and then through to 16 years. People find their lives working again, with help, with support, being a part of, included, loved, and being able to love back. So it's been a powerful message of good times and very sad reminders of where addiction takes us. So normally I do uh, some readings and I've got my book open here with As Bill Sees It, something I use every day. And uh, the reading for today was or is Complete Security. And it says, Upon entering AA, the spectacle of, the year, of years were of waste threw us into panic. Financial importance was no longer our principal aim. We now clamoured for material security. Even when we were re-established in our business, terrible fears often continued to haunt us. This made us misers and penny pinches all over again. Complete financial security we must have, or else. We forget that most alcoholics in AA have an earning power considerably, considerably above, the, above the average. We forgot the immense good our brother AAs, who were only too eager to help us to get better jobs when we deserved them. We forgot our actual potential financial insecurity, or we forgot the actual potential financial insecurity of every human being in the world. And worst of all, we forgot God. In money matters, we had faith only in ourselves, and not too much of that. And you know what? Giving that man just a few, well, doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, we have to look at ourselves and see what we can do, and how can we get the message across. But sometimes, it, maybe we just plant a, a seed of a thought and uh, for May 25th in this uh, one here Daily Reflections it's all about progressive gratitude gratitude to go forward rather than backward and it says I am gr very grateful that my higher power was given, has given me a second chance to live a worthwhile life through AA I have been restored to sanity the promises are being fulfilled in my life I am grateful to be free from the slavery of alcohol and in that person's case, heroin and crack cocaine. Anyway, it's a long reading, and I don't have the time. But you know, it's almost like we can we can hit the, the most amazing highs and be included, and accept also that we we see great sadness and we try our best to help. And the serenity prayer saves us from trying to save. We've got to save ourselves as well as trying to save others. So when I say, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, I must accept that and change the things I can and learn the wisdom to know the difference. It surely is just one day 